Don't fear the small bite. A narrative review of the rationale and misconceptions surrounding closure of abdominal wall incisions. Every operation in the abdominal cavity begins with an incision in the abdominal wall. The most common incision is the midline laparotum. It is the incision that is associated with the highest risk of development of an incisional hernia. Aside from incisional hernia development, two other short-term common complications related with the closure of the abdominal wall are surgical site infections, SSI, and fascial dehiscence, burst abdomen. SSI is an independent risk factor for both fascial dehiscence and incisional hernia. Patients with an SSI are far more likely to have an incisional hernia and are at higher risk for secondary infectious complications after incisional hernia repair. A variety of factors influence the healing process. These factors can be grouped in three main categories, patient-related, surgeon or surgical technique-related and material-related. In 2022, the European Hernia Society published updated guidelines for the closure of abdominal wall incisions in collaboration with the American Hernia Society. The updated guidelines suggest the use of running suturing with a slowly absorbable monofilament suture in a single layer, aponeurotic, small bite technique with a suture length to wound length ratio of 4 to 1 for elective midline incisions. Technique matters. Continuous versus interrupted suture. A continuous suture results in a preferable distribution of tension along the wound edges. A continuous suture with a suture length to wound length ratio of at least 4 to 1 resulted in earlier appearance and larger extent of the preferable collagen fraction, which is essential for the mechanical strength of the healing laparotomy. The groundbreaking publication of Israelson et al. demonstrated that using at least four times suture length to wound length increases tensile strength and leads to a significant reduction of incisional hernia development and wound infections. Small bites show superior wound bursting strength compared to long stitches. A main advantage of this is better distribution of tension. Suture steps, suture bites and ratio should be measured to become the standardized technique. Ideally, to achieve the desired suture length to wound length ratio, the suture steps should be 4 to 5 mm and the bites 5 to 8 mm. The correct technique would require to visualize 1 cm of aponeurosis on each side of the wound to ensure that no fat tissue will be included in the stitch. The working group of HER has proven that a high tension suture can result in a lower tensile strength in the healed wound. Tissue perfusion after low tension closure is significantly higher than after closure with high tension. A good rule of thumb is that the stitches should be visible and not sink into the tissue. Material matters. Suture and needle size. The recommended step and bite sizes with a big needle would be extremely difficult. To adequately perform the small steps and bites needed, a half-circle tapered needle of maximal 31 mm is recommended. A USP20 suture, as the one used in the stitch trial and recommended for a small bites closure, has a lower breaking point compared to, for example, USP1 PDS loop. This leads many surgeons to disregard the clinical evidence about the safety and efficacy of the small bites technique. A possible solution to overcome such considerations would be to use a USP-0 suture mounted on a smaller 24mm needle, like the CT2 needle. Any implant, including a suture, increases the risk of bacterial colonization and biofilm formation and may contribute to an infection. SSI after midline laparotomy leads to prolonged hospital stay, increasing mortality and increasing healthcare costs. The World Health Organization guidelines recommend a number of actions. Regarding closure technique, the use of antimicrobial sutures is introduced as a possible solution. Plus sutures were associated with a nearly 30% reduction in the risk of surgical site infection. The systematic review and meta-analysis of Depuy et al. comparing surgical site infection in abdominal surgery between triclosan coated and uncoated sutures show that the use of triclosan coated sutures for fascial closure statistically significantly reduces the incidence of SSI after abdominal surgery.
In the past 20 years, significant progress has been made in our understanding of the factors that influence healing of elective abdominal wall incisions after closure. In the classic elective laparotomy closure situation, the involvement of the small bites technique and the move towards an aponeurosis-only suture with a slowly absorbable antibacterial coated suture represents a major paradigm shift. Potentially, while not the subject of this review, the use of barbed sutures has shown promising first results in such settings. Which strategies will you implement in the closure of laparotomy incisions?